Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through all you need to know about tendon reflexes of the lower limb as a part of your lumbar spine neurological assessment. So the reason we go through tendon reflex tests is to see whether or not there is a compromise in our patient's neurological system, either as an upper motor neuron lesion, i.e. from the brain down to the spinal cord, or as a lower motor neuron lesion from the nerve root down to the nerve periphery. And in musculoskeletal practice, there are two main outcomes that we're looking for when it comes to our testing. Number one is a bilateral hyperreflexive response, which may be an indication of an upper motor neuron lesion, such as a central spinal tumor or a traumatic brain injury. And the second is a unilateral hyporeflexive response, which may be an indication of a nerve root compression at a single spinal level. Now, once you've seen this video, you can also have a look at our video, which is titled Interpretation of Reflex Tests, so that when you're going through the testing with your patient, you know exactly what you're looking for. So let's get into our main video. Let's get clinical. So essentially, when we are looking at your patient's reflexes, we are aiming to see whether they have a hyperreflexive, too weak, a reflex, or a hyperreflexive, too strong, a reflex and comparing that between the right and the left sides to see if it's equal. You can categorize your reflexes as either hyporeflexive, hyperreflexive, normal or absent. At this time, we're gonna take you through how to test the lower limb reflexes, and you can also look at our other video titled Interpretation of Reflex Tests to see how you can interpret your findings towards your patient. So, when we're testing our patient's reflexes, we start primarily in a sitting position. The patient is going to be relaxed where, as they're sitting on the edge of the bed so that the legs are hanging down loosely. We're looking at two specific reflexes. One is the knee reflex, sometimes called the knee jerk, and the ankle reflex, sometimes called the ankle jerk. So we're going to start with the knee reflex, and the knee reflex tests the reflex at the spinal level L3, L4. To find your point at which you um, uh, create your reflex, find the tibial tuberosity on the proximal tibia, and you can also find the distal patella here as well. It is between these two points that you're going to apply your reflex. In fact, if you palpate in between those two areas, you may find some indentations around the patella tendon because that's the joint line of the knee. And we're gonna be applying our reflex in that gap onto the patella tendon itself. When we do our reflex, we're going to do three reflex goes to uh, get an average of the patient's reflex. So let's find our two points, tibial tuberosity, distal patella, that's our point in the middle, and from here, one, two, and three. And we would test that on the right and left sides. You can see from our model's reflex that she has what we would ascertain as a normal or a good reflex. Sometimes you may see a hyperreflexive knee reflex where the knee comes all the way into an extended position, which we may uh, have some concern about in the case of a upper motor neuron lesion. Also, you might be able to see that in, uh, you might see a hypo-reflexive uh, reflex where there's very little movement in this kind of range, or even absent where there's nothing at all. So that's for the knee reflex. We're also going to show you through the ankle reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level S1, S2. To find your point here, we find the lateral malleolus on the outside of the ankle, and we come round to the Achilles tendon in line with the lateral malleolus, and that provides the point at which we do complete our reflex. What we suggest for this reflex is to place your hand underneath the patient's foot. And the reason being is that when you ascertain a good reflex, the, the, uh, the foot will go a little bit into plantar flexion like this. I'm exaggerating, but you'll feel it clearly if you put your hand underneath. So that's what you're feeling for to determine the patient's reflex. So in this position, we find our lateral malleolus. We come posterior to this at the Achilles tendon, and then we provide our three reflexes, one, two, three. And whilst I'm doing that, I can feel myself that the model's ankle pushes down into my hand. So now we're going to look at the Babinski and the Clonus reflexes. These reflexes should be a normal part of your lumbar spine neurological assessment, and you may consider it 
in your upper limb neurological assessment. The reasons to consider it in your upper limb neurological assessment is if your patient presents with signs that may mimic or may indicate a upper motor neuron lesion, such as gait disturbance. So now we're going to go through the two tests, starting with the Babinski test. So in essence, for the Babinski test, we're going to be applying a scraping stimulus along the foot like so. Let's go into the details. We start with one finger around the bottom aspect of the toes in a light grip. We'll explain why this is there in a second. Next, we're going to use the back of your reflex hammer, the sharp aspect, to provide our scraping stimulus. And the stimulus needs to go in this direction, from the center of the calcaneus on the sole of the foot, up the lateral border of the foot, and across the metatarsophalangeal heads to the first digit. So that's going to be our scraping stimulus. As we provide our scraping stimulus, a normal reaction would be for the first digit to move into a flexed position. And that's why you have your finger along the bottom of the foot to see whether or not this happens. A positive result and a sign of an upper motor neuron lesion would be if the big toe suddenly goes into an extended position and the rest of the toes spread in a fanning-like manner like our model is showing you here. So let's go through the test. As we said, light grip under the balls of the toes, start at the bottom of the calcaneus and come up the lateral aspect of the foot across to the first digit, like so. Again, a normal result would be flexion of the big toe and a, a, a positive result, an indication of a upper motor neuron lesion would be extension of the big toe and the fanning of the other toes. So that's the Babinski test. Now we're gonna look at the clonus test. For this position, uh, for this, excuse me, for this test, we're essentially going to be providing a jerking movement of the ankle into a dorsiflex position. Before we uh, actually provide the jerk, we check with our patient whether or not dorsiflexion produces any pain and whether uh, dorsiflexion meets a suitable range for us to perform the test. And we can see with our model here that this is absolutely fine and that we're clear to complete the test. So, as we said, the test is to provide a jerking movement of the ankle into a dorsiflex position like so. And you can do it a number of times just to double check. A normal result in this test would just be either that the patient holds their ankle in a dorsiflex position because of their active contraction or that the foot remains flat. A positive result, i.e. an indication of an upper motor neuron lesion, is for immediately after you apply your ankle jerk, the ankle moves into rhythmical contractions of the into plantar flexion, and it's more than three rhythmical contractions that you're looking for. So, just to clarify again, a normal result would be either for the ankle to remain in a dorsiflex position because the patient's contracted um, their dorsiflexures, or for the foot to remain in a normal posture like so. A positive result, an indication of an upper motor neuron lesion, would be when you apply your jerk for the foot to go into more than three rhythmical contractions into plantar flexion. A quick tip to help you remember the spinal levels that are tested by your lower and upper limb reflexes is to remember 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 as you move from the foot up to the head. Let's explain. So if we start at the bottom of the body with the ankle reflex, this tests the spinal reflex at S1, S2. The next reflex up would be the knee reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level, L3, L4. If we miss the brachioradialis reflex, the next reflex up is the biceps reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level, C5, C6. And finally, the next reflex up is the triceps reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level, C7, C8. So therefore, we can remember that from the bottom to the top, your reflexes test the levels at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ankle, S, 1, 2. Knee, L, 3, 4. Biceps, C, 5, 6. Triceps, C, 7, 8. So to summarize this video on the reflexes of the lower limb, 
there are two main reflexes to test, which are the knee reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level L3, L4, and the ankle reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level S1, S2. Test these reflexes on both sides and categorize them as hyperreflexive, hyporeflexive, normal, or absent. There are two other reflexes which should be completed as a part of any lumbar spine neurological assessment or if you suspect signs of an upper motor neuron disorder. These tests are the Babinski and Clonus reflex tests. And that completes our video on lower limb reflex tests. Next, I'd like to suggest you have a look at our other videos in the lumbar spine neurological assessment catalogue, including palpation of the lumbar spine, dermatomal testing, myotomal testing, and lower limb tension tests. Remember, you can also have a look at our video titled Interpretation of Reflex Tests for more information about what you've learned in this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon, right here on Clinical Physio.